Hello and welcome to Off the Press, the newspaper review program where we take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it. With me to dissect it and analyze this morning is Liberos Oshoma, legal practitioner in studio, and analyzing remotely uh, from Germany is Aisha Osori, who is the executive director of... Um, Open Society Initiative West Africa. Good morning, Aisha. I believe you can hear me. Okay, we'll come back to her. Well, good morning, uh, Liberos, again. It's good to still have you to take a look at our national dailies. We have a couple of papers here, but we will begin with the Punch newspaper. It would be displayed for you shortly. And it says, LCCI Neka Pengason demand stimulus packages, PIB passage that's on page 24 um, of the punch newspaper and uh, be ready to pay higher for fuel pppra says on page 21 and then we distributed nafdaq certified rice according to the federal government tell state that story is on page 24 and imf may approve nigeria's uh, 3.4 billion naira loan today so let's cross our fingers and see. That story is on page 21 inside the Punch newspaper. And the big story, Buhari declares interstate lockdown as nationwide curfew begins Monday. And that story is on pages 2, 11, and 12 of the Punch newspaper. And of course, if you take a look at the right hand, you will see the COVID-19 updates globally and locally also. And if you scroll down a bit, just before you get there, do uh, shuts down, Buhari shuts down Kano for two weeks, OK's extension in Lagos, Ogun FCT. Lockdown will fail without effective testing, warns Jonathan, former president. Uh, let my father rest in peace. Abba Kiari's daughter tells uh, critics, oh, wow. That story is, on, is continued in the newspaper, inside the newspaper. Yeah, and that's the picture story there, displayed of fire. And this happened yesterday. Fire got Lagos NNPC station, 30 cars and buildings also burnt in it. That story is on pages four and five. The unfortunate incident happened yesterday afternoon. Now, Dark Communication Chairman uh, tests positive for COVID-19, and that's on page seven. Kenny Martin's 7.7 .7 billion alleged fraud case gets fresh dates on page 28. And uh, my CSO died of coronavirus, declares Tinubu on page 12. And um, we have controversy as NBA disowns Lagos lawyer critic on pages four and five. Equity commissioners uh, abductors demand 30 million naira. That's according to the family. Uh, right. Um, okay. I believe that Aisha is back and she will also join us. Aisha, can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. Good morning. I can Thanks hear for you. Good morning. So good to see you this morning. I hope you are keeping Anything well. Right. I am. Thanks. Great. Aisha, we will be analyzing and reviewing the paper this morning with an in studio analyst, uh, Liberos Oshoma, so, uh, and I. So this morning, we want to begin with the Punch newspaper. Uh, already uh, read out the headlines. So I'll ask Liberos to start. His intervention. Which story is catching your attention this morning? Yeah, yeah basically, um, uh, what's um, in the news now? Buhari's uh, nationwide broadcast, and then um, um, the ease of the lockdown, mm -hmm. and then um, interstate lockdown, and you know all, all of that. I'm I'm happy that um, the federal government had allowed, uh, like I said before, the state government to manage you know, the crisis, depending on the peculiarity of, you know, what's happening in their state. Mm -hmm. uh, because the federal government is in Abuja. The federal government can manage the crisis in Abuja, you know, but the state governors should be responsible, you know, what in, their state. in what happens in their state. <clears throat> uh, just like um, um, uh, the World Health Organization, organization did say with the case of Madagascar, that even though the drugs they're using had not been approved, but they are, they are responsible to their citizens, mm -hmm. and so it is entirely, you know, they are, they are at their discretion. And, and so the state also should, you know, manage whatever with intervention and the synergy from the central government. And, and I, I think that's, um, you know, a, a kudos to federal government for taking that initiative. Right. And then because also the states are responsible for their economy. 
Um, we all know that, you know, at Intava, you go to the Federal Executive Council to share, you know, resources and revenue. But as it is now, internally generated revenue also is very key at this, at this point. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'll go to Aisha now. Aisha, I, I, I'm sure you saw the speech, or you read, or you watched it. Uh, what stood out for you, if I may ask you? Well, to be honest, everything was interesting, but for me, more the, the opportunity for clarity. Mm -hmm. So, for example, while we're expecting an ease in the lockdown in the three locations, Lagos, Ogun, and FCT, it's not clear when they say what businesses will be able to open. So no guidelines were given. So we're hoping that in the next week, mm -hmm. when the ease will be implemented, that we'll get more clarity on you know what businesses are ap applicable for for being um, eligible for the ease, because for now there's no clarity. Right. The second thing that I thought about was that there's a need for really massive logistics around those three states and maybe even across the country. If we want people to practice physical distancing mm -hmm. and we want people to wear masks, then we're going to have to provide those masks. Instead of our policemen being, what's the word I'm looking for, um, weapons of, let's just say, mass, mass destruction. destruction on our streets, let them be giving lots of masks out so that when they see people who are not wearing masks, they give them these masks to wear. So we need to mobilize and give free masks to many Nigerians, in fact, all Nigerians. And so this is an opportunity for local industry. And then the last thing I thought about was communication. We really need a lot more communication. We cannot be expecting these once every two weeks communication from the president. We need a lot more communication going out, even from the Minister of Information, just daily briefings on what is going on, trying to combat all the fake news that's out there. People want to know how to prevent it, and then when they have it, how to cure it. So for me, those are the three things that stood out for me. All right. Uh, Liberals, I can hear you <laughs> laughing when uh, Aisha mentioned communications there. Uh, what, what's your thought on yeah, that? Yeah, because uh, Aisha wasn't here when I raised some of these concerns. That's and right. um, that um, apart from um, the ease of lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, everything that was said had been said before. Right. And um, he, she also talked about communication. In the absence of information, rumor tribes, True. And when rumors start to spread, even intellectuals are turned to convey of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so when, and then this approach, this approach for me, it's not working. She raised concerns. These are concerns that journalists ordinarily would have raised mm -hmm. after the address, you know. And because it's not a question and answer section, you know, a speech is read out to you, then you wait for, you know, for that communication. I also raised a concern that now the federal government is saying they are going to work out, you know, which sectors. Mm -hmm would resume, who to go to work. And so it means that as we speak, even before the speech, there was basically nothing, mm -hmm. you know, apart from that ease of lockdown. Essentially, you're saying maybe they would have just named the sector. So this uh, agri or uh, fuel or oil or... It all, of go this, back. all of this would have, mm -hmm. you know, helped if we had a, a question and answer section where people would raise these concerns and mm -hmm. then they'll be addressed immediately. You know, but in the absence of that, you're just going to wait for another one week for another address again, and then, um, you know. And then people are asking questions. The poor and vulnerable are asking basic questions. Mm -hmm. You say there is no cure, there is no vaccine, Most but yet you are well. discharging people. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? And then we also know, if it's in the news, that um, it's only when rich men test positive to it that it's become breaking news. The poor people who have not even been tested because the testing rate is also very slow. Mm -hmm. well, you know, what happens to them? What can they do as a stopgap? It's also in the news that um, yesterday I listened to an analyst who said most of the medical doctors in Kano have absconded. You know, so what happens mm -hmm. as a stopgap? What can people do before they get to the hospitals? All of these are not there. We're just counting numbers right. and it's quite unfortunate. I agree with you. Uh, Aisha, yes, if you can hear me, stay hear me. Um, I can hear you. Good. So, do you agree, or uh, what's your thoughts on the fact that, you know, when we don't have appropriate communication, there seems to be confusion and ambiguity at this point. How do we resolve this? I, I mean, he, spot on completely. People are really confused. In fact, if you go on social media since yesterday, some people even suspect that this this delay, this one week delay till May 4th is just a ploy mm -hmm. and that what we're going to hear around May 4th is another extension. So that just shows that because there was lack of clarity and specificity in terms of what the plan was, people don't even believe that there will be an ease. So I agree that there's a lot more communication that we should be doing. And for me, it doesn't have to be the president. Whatever excuses people want to give, we heard Amici say the president is shy, mm -hmm. whatever. Whatever excuses people want to give, the president doesn't have to be the only one that communicates. 
Right. You know, and maybe that speaks to the to the the expertise on the presidential task force. Maybe we need more a more of a blend between the politicians who are there and the technocrats and people who can speak and articulate what's going on. But the truth is, the country needs more leadership. Um, I while I understand that yes, the states have some sort of responsibility to their citizens. The truth is, Nigerians move around. We right. intermarry, we leave our businesses in one place and our families in another place. We move around. So this, 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 there also has to be some sense of a collaborative conversation about interstate movement. It cannot be on a state-by-state -state basis, with some states saying, we're going to give our passes, other states saying this or that. We need the Governor's Forum and the Presidential Task Force to work together, come out with clear communication and, and share this. And they don't have to share this by themselves alone. This is the time to collaborate with all the people who have influence, whether it's the emirs, whether it's religious leaders. Let them be the ones on radio. Give them airtime. Let them be there telling people what they need to hear mm -hmm. constantly. All right, Aisha. Um, let's take another item here. A lockdown will fail without effective testing. <laughs> That's uh, former president. Good luck, Jonathan. Warning. Uh, Liberals, you're here in studio. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's obvious. Mm. Because I did say <clears throat> the, the, the rate of testing is very slow, extremely slow. For, for um, 28 days, we have only done less than um, 10,000. And, and so if you compare that to what is happening in Ghana and some other West African sub-region, like you, you know, read in your new Senegal, mm -hmm. you know, it's abysmally poor. And then one of the medical doctors also did say that worldwide, we are taught from bottom, which mm -hmm. is, you know, compared to the population that we have. And so when you ease the lockdown without adequate testing, so what it means is that you still don't know the numbers that have it. So since you don't know the numbers that have it, how are you going to fight, you know, an enemy that you don't even know, mm -hmm. you know, the territory they occupy? That's, that's on one side. And now also um, the hospitals are going to be overwhelmed because you don't even know what to treat mm -hmm. because there are special centers for this coronavirus. And so people are now even scared to go to hospitals. That's correct. And so when you get to the hospitals, the hospitals don't even have facilities to hold you pending whether to whether you have coronavirus or not. So these are some of the challenges. So it's, uh, it shows absence of infrastructure. And I also think that with this crisis, what we should be doing now is to be thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. At the end of this, now we, it's easy to build makeshift hospitals in five days, in 14 days, that we have not been doing before. It shows we have the capacity to do it. So all of this, do we have them in the template that in the absence, after all of this, we're going to be putting these structures in place, mm -hmm. even a census, we don't know how the number of poor people we have, the number of vulnerable people. You talk about uh, the poor of the poor, as if you know you now have classes C of yeah, poverty. Category. Of category. It. Mm. And then you're sharing palliative. You really don't even know what are the criteria for sharing palliative. We're not even talking about the SMEs now, where you say you have a special intervention fund for the SMEs, and then what will be the criteria for assessing this intervention fund. Mm. So all of this. So we need to also begin to look beyond this. And conclusively, so that I can hear the floor for Aisha, is the fact that this didn't just jump at us. We had every opportunity to prepare for it, but we failed to plan you know, for it. And, and, and it is obvious now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why we should be more strategic in easing the lockdown. The governors need to step up their plate and forget about this copy and paste approach. You wait for the president to speak before you now copy whatever he, you know, he said at the center. All right, Aisha, let me come to you now. Uh, obviously, one of the things that we have discussed and everyone is talking about is, is the fact that um, COVID-19 has revealed and showed a lot of lapses in leadership in you know different spheres of uh, society but particularly leadership we've seen the gaps uh, there are you also worried that you know uh, not having enough testing done in nigeria uh, does not suggest the clear situation does not show the clear situation for for us you know in in the country no. Again, you're completely right. This, what COVID-19 has done across the world, not just in Nigeria or Africa, is show very glaringly where the inconsistencies in our government policies are and the real gaps in governance. For me, honestly, I don't. I agree with um, President Jonathan about the fact that we're not testing enough, and Liberus also made that point, so I won't belabor it. But the truth is, so what can we do if we know we're not going to test? Because the truth is, I have... Personally, I have very little confidence that we're actually ever going to do as much testing as we need. 
In Germany, they've done over a million tests. We're not Germany, we're Nigeria, which is not to excuse us. But for me, if we know that this is something we are not going to be able to do, again, I would stress what we should be doing, what's within our power, is to communicate effectively, is to make sure that people understand physical distancing, is to ensure that as we ease down on the lockdown and we say business can continue, we are arming our citizens with as many things as and the information they need. So whether it's the masks, whether it's encouraging transport to ensure that if before we used to have 16 people on a bus, maybe we can only have eight people on a bus right now, who will bear the cost? Will there be increase in transportation or will there be palliatives going directly to transport um, 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 companies so that they can bear this burden for the citizens? So for me, honestly, let's not waste too much time on this testing issue. I am not confident that we're going to meet it. Or if we are, if we do want to, we should be looking to Senegal, uh, we should be looking to Ghana. I don't I think, think we need to be waiting for some foreign tests to come. Let's find out what our neighbors are doing. Let's beg them. Um, let us pay them to help share this um, technology or whatever it is they're using. And let's move on. But the truth is we're never going to test as many people as we need. And it, it maybe even comes down to finally we'll be able to count ourselves properly. Are we really 200 million Nigerians? This is something that's been well, up way for more than that. years mm. and years. So. This is, again, another opportunity to look at that area and see what data we have on our, on our population. All right. Uh, Liberals is here nodding in affirmation because just before you came on in the first segment, uh, th these are the issues that he highlighted. Interestingly, you are affirming that. Now, you also mentioned uh, physical distancing. If the guys in the production would, again, roll out the picture, the punch newspaper, um, that, you know, is, is, there is uh, the case of the fire yesterday, and um, I'm sure they will put it up in a bit. Uh, you can see the the people who are there, yeah, the picture is up now. So the question is, in the face of this lockdown, or this pandemic, how do we manage emergencies like this? Take a look at the picture there. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's, um, let's start from um, Lagos State. If you mm -hmm. remember when um, Fuki Akindele was charged, you know, for violating the regulations mm -hmm. on the social distancing, you saw what the crowd at the court's premises where the attorney general even violated more, much mm. more, the social distancing regulation. And not yet happened. He died there. Look, take, we'll move it to the case of uh, Abak Kiaris barrier. And, you know, all of that, all of the violation and the social distancing. Mm -hmm. And then the attempt by the FCT to, you know, um, you know, pull a wool over our eyes that they were doing contact tracing. Mm -hmm. Why wait? For the rules to be violated before you begin to talk about contact tracing. Right. And then lastly, to emergency, this is an NPC. An NPC is supposed understanding the peculiarity of the operation. They're supposed to have, you know, standby emergency fire service. Mm -hmm. But look at the crowds, you, you know, um, at that filling station, you know, people, it's as if you know, there is no coronavirus pandemic. Again, we which forgot what is happening. We completely forget that. Mm. So it brings me back to the issue that I see also raised. Communication. How are we, how effective are we communicating? Apart from this um, impunity and this um, um, uh, um, uh, bootjack approach to, oh, yes, you have not obeyed the rules, mm. and, and so people are being uh, harassed. And, you know, how effective are we reaching out to these people to communicate in the language that they understand? And then also appeal and ensure that the message is passed down to the lowest level of the ladder so people will understand. And so for, to answer your question directly, on emergency situation, mm -hmm. we are truly not ready for emergency situation. Mm -hmm. And that is why when you have emergencies such as this, it is the people that will always, uh, you have three categories of people, some who are coming to look out for what they will loot, mm. some who are looking up to, you know, assistance from there, and then those are genuinely, you know, there to, to assist. Mm. And then because, we, we back to the same thing I said before, when there is a systemic collapse, you are going to have a crisis like this. Mm. And then we're truly not ready to address it. So what we should do now is to ensure that we communicate effectively. That is the only mm. tool that we have. In the absence of that, we should just let go. We should say bye-bye to all of this propaganda. Aisha, let me come to you. I can see you smiling there. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this also, before we wrap? I'm yeah, I'm laughing because 
maybe Libera's last point about in God we trust. There was a joke on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, I have to admit that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of an addict. That was saying that the uh, blood of Jesus and Inshallah are going to finish over the next few years because over the next few weeks okay. because that's what people are going to be saying over and over again. Um, and then they're also joking about the fact that you know everybody's immunity will be tested now. But I, back to the emergency. For me, I look at the picture and I say, what's the opportunity here? You know, okay, yes, we're a bit disorderly as Nigerians. We think that that's our nature. We're voyeuristic. But if I was a policeman or if I was somebody in authority and I saw this this number of people around, I would get a foghorn and try and peacefully disperse people and explain to them why it's, it's not necessary for them to be there and the danger they're putting themselves in. You know, again, this would be an opportunity if we had social services or if we had a... a our value and our ethics of governance was to protect instead of exploit. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why there were not people handing people masks here saying, oh, please put this on, please put this on. Again, if we're talking about productivity, people, I see many Nigerians being very innovative, creating masks. Government should buy these masks. We have trillions of, uh, of naira, supposedly, or billions of naira that have been donated. Buy these masks for people. Make sure that they are they're customized. Make, make sure that they fit women's faces, men's faces, children's faces, and hand these things out. But for me, honestly, I, I just, I wish that we'd just be more practical about these things and not yeah. ha wring our hands in, in futility. I see this as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. One, to educate. All the people out there could have been hearing a message about how important it is to practice social distancing or physical distancing. They could have been given masks to take home with them. All right. Aisha, oh, sorry. Thank you so very much for your time uh, this morning and joining us. And of <laughs> Of course, Liberos, thank you too for being here. My pleasure. I'll say you both stay safe. Aisha, stay safe where you are. And stay safe too. Thank you. And Liberos, you keep safe. And thank you. Stay safe too. Thank you. <laughs> this is where we're going to call it a wrap for Off the Press this morning. This program, as you know, is Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okoye saying you too stay safe out there. <laughs>